I would describe the commuter as Hitchcock meets Die Hard, watered down. But hey, even though it was seriously diluted, it still did remind me of Hitchcock and Die Hard. And that's pretty darn good. Yes, this thriller has some glorious moments, chiefly because Liam Neeson is still a true movie star. You know, recently he played Mark Felt. That was a really strong movie. I don't know if it was really a theater-worthy experience, but I really enjoyed it. And I don't know if it was for that movie specifically, but he slimmed down a lot. And he's kept that look, and he looks more like a movie star than ever. And then also, nobody can squeeze more out of a single location than Joan Collette Sarah. It is a marvel to behold, particularly if you're interested in filmmaking, right? You know, you can kind of see what's going on behind the scenes and you're like, wow, a single location does not limit you, Joan Collette Sarah. He was uh, considered for Suicide Squad 2 for a while there. And I was like, wow, if it takes place all in one location, he's your guy. He's supposed to also do uh, Jungle Cruise. And I guess if they want to keep it on the, on, the, on the boat, he would also do an amazing job. But by the end of the movie, you know what hits you like a train? The realization that this is just another low-budget Liam Neeson actioner, and he's just made so many of them at this point. Most with Joan Collette Sarah. All right, so let's start with what works. I really love the opening of the film. It very cleverly establishes Liam Neeson's daily routine as the commuter in a fresh, modern way. Like, they start out... It's a lot of quick cuts, basically, and I just want to warn you that even though the 10-10 winds coming on is super annoying, they know when to stop, right? That's not going to go on for too long, because when the movie started, I was like, oh, how many times are you going to startle me, you know, uh, out of bed with this uh, hard cut to 10-10 winds waking Liam Neeson up? But overall, it was really a nice piece of filmmaking. And by the way, Liam Neeson wears a suit like nobody's business. There is a shot in the opening of him walking across Grand Central Station, you know, the, the main part of the terminal. And his suit is changing with the days, but he just stays the same as he walks. And he just oozes movie star. That shot in particular did a lot for this movie. <laughs> I was more forgiving toward the beginning as that's still, you know, my, my, how impressed I was with that still kind of washed over me. All right, so then also, there is an excellent action sequence in the middle of the film between Liam Neeson and, well, I don't want to give it away, but while I, I'm sure it's cheated with cuts and sped up film, it plays as one long take for the fight scene as it moves all over the train. And it's really inventive and very well done. Again, I was taken a little bit out of it. You know, the movie isn't horribly engaging. And I was like, oh, I would like this for Suicide Squad too. This is a good choice. He didn't get the gig, but I can see why he was considered. And there are a lot of nice uh, directing flourishes throughout the film. Joan Collette Sarah, I think is definitely a talented director. And as I said, nobody can squeeze more out of a single location than this guy, be it a plane, a cove, or now a train. Uh, now, speaking of not wanting to give anything away, the movie does have some good twists that, in a lot of cases, I did not see coming. And then in other cases, I didn't, I didn't see them coming until the very last moment. So that's impressive. I also thought it was cool to have a female villain. And even though she isn't used very much, Vera Fermia certainly makes an impression when she is in the movie. And she might have found herself a new chapter in her career. I know she's Norman Bates' mother, but she had like Kate Blanchett vibes here, right? And Kate Blanchett can't play all the female villains on the big screen, so Vera Farmiga would be a nice backup choice. Uh, now for what doesn't work. All right, so at this point, as I've said, we've just seen Liam Neeson do this too many damn times at this point. Uh, even though he's still giving it all, he's not phoning it in here, but I, you've just seen it before, especially with Joan Collette Sarah behind the camera. So there's a sameness that just seeps into it, you know, especially as the movie goes on. You're like, ah, I've done this. And as for Joan Collette Sarah, he eventually runs out of cool angles, particularly with the last big scene of the movie. And it's just too static, a little too cheap, uh, we'll talk about some of the actors, which don't help. Uh, and then also the script just gets a little too cheesy. And therefore, it's not as impressive as the beginning of the movie. And unfortunately, that's the note the movie ends on. And that's the feeling you have when you leave the theater. We've talked before about even if your film has problems, if you end on a really strong note, people will leave the theater being like, that was a great movie. And unfortunately, this ends on one of the film's weaker notes. Uh, now, there's one supporting character also who's killed in the movie. I don't want to give it away, but I want you to know who it is. So when it happens, you'll be like, that's who she was talking about. They're killed in a very heroic fashion during the big train derailment sequence, which was a little CGI heavy, I think, quite frankly. But I, I know this is a movie, right? But I felt it was so unfair and so tragic that this character was killed and Liam Neeson wasn't, right? 
I just kind of couldn't get over it. So that speaks to that actor's ability to really connect with me as an audience uh, goer in such a small role, in such a particularly small role, so in a very short amount of time. Uh, and I guess also to the script to some degree, although I think the script was cheating a little bit. This actor made it feel a little bit more realistic. But as for the, the large supporting cast overall, I had very mixed feelings about them. Now, I appreciated that they represented, I think, New York today accurately. And there were some interesting characters there. I thought it was nice. But for the most part, the quality of the acting with the, with the supporting characters, just, it wasn't only movie caliber, but it wasn't even TV caliber by today's standards. There was a lot of student film acting in this movie, and I think that's pretty unforgivable for Liam Neeson and Joan Collette Sarah have worked so much at this point, right? I mean, I don't know if they were cheaping out, if that's what it was, uh, and maybe they made themselves feel better, like being like, oh, we're giving these new actors an opportunity to be in a movie, and I'm like, ah, oh, they're not going to go anywhere because they're not good enough. And you just brought your movie down. So spend a little extra money on some better, uh, you know, some better actors. I mean, there are some familiar faces here, but interestingly, for the most part, it's the, the new faces that get the most screen time and um, they just don't measure up. Uh, even though they seem like lovely people. <laughs> All right, so anyway, also, if you're wondering why Liam Neeson's son looks so familiar, that's because it's Tommen from Game of Thrones. It was driving me crazy throughout the movie. I was like, who is that? So you're welcome. Now you know, and you don't have to be too distracted throughout the film. So should you see The Commuter? <laughs> I mean, if you really want to go to the movies, or later on down the line, you really want to stream a movie, or you want to watch it when you're traveling, etc., Again, it certainly has its moments. And Liam Neeson is a movie star because he has a particular set of skills, and sometimes we're in the mood to watch him use those skills. So as to whether or not you want to buy a ticket to ride here, it's up to you. It's a personal decision because only you know if you're truly in the mood for, for some standard Liam Neeson action. All right, so that's my review of The Commuter. I'm very curious to hear your thoughts down below. Since there are a lot of surprises and twists in the movie, if you're going to put a spoiler comment, please be sure to mark it before you write the spoiler. Uh, and of course, as always, you can check out some more videos right now.